Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're going to do that wonderful game changer wet on wet technique that I love. And if you haven't seen the other videos, I'm doing it again to show you. We're going to do some sun really fun wet on wet watercolor technique where you're painting the back of the paper with water and then the front of it and it keeps damp longer so you can kind of bleed some great colors into the paper and they stay longer. It's a lot of fun technique and we're splattering here. We're using a credit card. We're doing some kind of loose dandelions and some wheat. Just kind of getting the swing of things, going to get it closer towards autumn. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do something more in those color veins, you know, playing with browns and yellows and some blues. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, trace bills, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. Patreons also get first dibs and watercolor workshops and retreats, so it's a little bonus. And we have a Facebook group also. You can find a link to that in the description box below. Just hit the words, show more, and you'll see it. So, without further ado, let's get painting with wet on wet techniques that I love. All right, guys, for this really great exercise, I've done this a few times on YouTube, and I'm going to keep doing it again because it's a game changer with wet on wet. Um, have like a either like a plastic. You can get like a piece of plexiglass from like Home Depot or Lowe's or something. This is like plastic palette that I have. Um, something like that because you don't want it to be like cardboard or um, I don't know, like wood or anything. You want it to be like a plastic thing. So we'll be using eight long round for this also. I might use my liner brush. I have an Umbra, uh, Princeton Umbra, um, sorry, Umbra <laughs> liner number four brush with skinny little strokes. And just gonna wet back and we're gonna wet the front. So um, we can use a sponge or just a flat wash brush. So here's the paper side we're gonna use. We'll start off wetting the back. And it's gonna adhere to that plastic in the back and it's gonna stick to it like having almost like a, um, a block. So, and you know, cause blocks are kind of expensive. This is the cheap way to do a block, but also have a nice great wet and wet. So here now you see, I'm putting it down on the plastic and it's really just kind of adhering to it. And now we're going to use that same brush and we're going to get this side wet. So both sides are wet. It's a wet on wet, wet on wet super technique. And then we're going to start to bleed color. Now we're going to be playing with all kinds of fun colors, but uh, mostly browns and a little bit of blue. I'm going to grab my Prince and Neptune 12 because it's a very big brush. It gets a nice loose color. So I have my burnt umber here, get that loose. T consistency, very, very loose. Um, I have my ultramarine blue. I'm gonna make some paints gray with that one, like a gray blue, deeper color. I can even have Prussian blue in here, get the little gray in here, like a deeper blue. So I'm gonna kind of dabble that and then some yellows. So here I'm gonna kind of put some of that front umber in here. I'm gonna grab some cabin yellow deep, kind of loosen that up a little bit. I'm gonna mix some brown with that. So it's not just bright yellow, kind of playing with the, adding that in there. Then the paint's gray mixed with the brown. You see that color right in there? Just kind of like going like this, making like, like kind of like twigs, but tapping in the water. And I'll put some yellow down in here. See, we're just kind of moving this color paint around. You can put a little pink in there. I've got some bright rose I can mix in there. So you've got some nice pinkish tones. Very kind of like sweet autumn, getting close to fall colors. Yeah. And then we'll do some blue on top. More of a gray blue. So it's kind of like the sky. You can kind of lift it and have it blend a little bit, bleed. So I've got, like I said, ultramarine blue. I can put some in here. I'm just playing with this right now. Mm. Bleeding that color in. It all dry lighter when it's done. But I'm going mixing some more browns down in here. And a little bit thicker, it's going to stay longer for the wet and wet. See, there's like the dark gray with brown. We're starting to play with our color here. The yellow ochre is a pretty color to use. Just kind of making some like lines like this with the number 12. Got a nice point here. Swooping it up, moving it around. You can already feel like it's the field and the wheat field kind of situation, right? If you want to make some dandelions, well, you can remove some of the color, um, get a really kind of 
hard round brush. Not super hard. I'm trying to find one. So I'm moving color. Looking to some like little swirls like this. Or you can take your paper towel. If I use my number 12, I can kind of lift it. See I'm twisting it and removing it. Or I can take a piece of paper towel and kind of just go like that and make my circles. Kind of looks like bokeh. Right, removing the color. Going like this. Getting the round circle in here. See? Looks like that. You can turn this into um, dandelions if you want. Or not. They kind of look kind of silly like that. So I don't know if I'm going to keep that. It's, it's another thing you can do. You can try making dandelions. I'm going to go over mine. Keep a little bit of the white in some of the areas. Now, I didn't mention this, but we can take some gouache and splatter that and kind of dissipate. It'd be kind of really cool. Getting some darker color now down here. Getting some darker brown with some gray. One variety of tones. I'm kind of like doing that same thing with the grass with the tip of the brush, swooping it up. Now I took, I got rid of my white spots, but you can keep them. Swooping back up here. Just like that. It will dry lighter, but you get it. It's kind of like a wheat field, right? You get it. I'm going to go back and add my yellow with a little of that rose. Ooh, that's really bright and intense. Get some bright, pretty yellow color in here. Still very, very wet. You can try and play with the liner brush now. So this is a nice little thin, skinny little line brush. And I'll take the paints gray in the burnt umber and mix the two. Kind of thick, not butter, but slightly under butter. So you can move the paint around. Now it's really dark. Let me grab more of a brown tone. You can kind of move it up. See, so you get the nice skinny little wheat lines. It's still very wet up here, so it kind of will bleed a little bit. Crisscross. See, so just very delicately touching the paper. Crisscrossing these little wheats. I'm just loving, I love a liner brush. It's a lot of fun to use. If you don't have one, try and get one. They're fun to play with. And just using very skinny lines coming up this way. Still has that bleeding effect going on. I might want to play with adding a little gouache and just splattering it for some fun dissipation here. So I'm going to grab some gouache. If you have acrylic ink, something like that, use any brush to do this. Small the brush, small the splatter. I'm going to use an just an eight long round, play around with this, loosen up the paint, and let's see what happens. It's fun to play with the gouache and the watercolor. So now it looks like snow, but it's gonna eventually just kind of bleed and dissipate and fade into the background. It's the beauty of it, I know. So the blues with the browns, just lovely colors. If you want to add a little more blue, you can. Let me see if I can add a little blue up here. Just want a little blue. A little more blue up there. So I'm going to go ahead and just dip my brush along here. Have it bleed down a little bit more. It's all preference. I just felt like it was too light. So I wanted to add some more blue. You don't have to do that. I just felt like doing it. Okay, and it's still very wet that it's going to blend nicely. It's not going to have this like cauliflower situation happening. Going to go in between some of these. Get a little darker. Playing around with the color here. Just a bit. Yeah, I like that. I might even play around with some blue down in here. Still very damp. You can still play. You know, this is the whole situation where you can play with lifting the color. I've talked about this many times in my videos. If you want to lift a skinny line, so you're just kind of mopping up the color 
See how I'm kind of mopping it? I'm tapping back on the paper towel. Now it's very wet. And it's kind of folding back in. But you can still kind of mop it. Also, um, having a credit card close by, when it's damp, when we're going to test it, if it's super wet, it's going to fold right back into the color. I mean, the color is going to fold right back into the paper. If it's not super wet, if it's just damp enough, then you'll scrape it and you'll have the whiteness. Well, let's see. Okay. There we go. Getting some fun little lines here happening. Just a lot of fun to play with. Credit cards, scraping, splattering, all that good stuff to create beautiful blooms and things. And like I said, if you still wanted to come up here and kind of remove, I like to do it with the paintbrush. The paper towel is kind of nice too, but this feels like more subtle. I do want to think I want to keep a dandelion or two here. Let's play around with that. Maybe just a few. I intended to only be wheat, but maybe we'll play around with some dandelions. To make it just a little more interesting. So obviously you're removing some circle, a circle of paint here. See how the paint kind of folds still back in there, but it looks subtle. I like that. And so we got two there. Let's put one over here. Depends on how big you want them. Looking kind of cute. I know, I just went to do We Field and I did the first initial dandelion. You're like, what is she doing? But there's a method always to my madness. I think I need one down here. I think I need five of them. And so when you remove the paint and you're going to go back in and kind of put some lines in there. Mm, I should have a cluster over here. It doesn't look strange. Like I said, you're removing the paint by just damping the paintbrush and tapping on the paper towel. And I think I'll put one more down here. Ooh, that's really kind of cool. Let me do a little teeny just dot here. I think that's good. Maybe another couple over here. <laughs> I know you're like, what is she doing? I'm playing. I have a procedure in mind that I want to do and then I go ahead and paint. And then what happens is intuitively things just take over. So I'm moving more. I don't know. And we don't just want to just wait. And you see, as I'm painting, talking to you in real time here, because I work in real time, I just see the magic happening with dandelions and wheat. So that's how I do my process. If you ever came to a workshop or a retreat, you would see that. You'd see how my brain works. I just, you kind of have to do the same thing. You have to, you can have a plan, but sometimes as you're painting, you say, well, wait a minute, I see this and this looks great. So that's what I'm doing. And it's actually coming out even better. So you're just removing it. Like I said, I like to remove it with the paintbrush rather than a paper towel. It's more subtle, not as intense. If you go in with that paper towel, obviously it's going to be whiter, see? You can kind of go in the center and make it whiter if you want. But I'm kind of loving the colors. It's kind of like a late autumn. Excuse me, not late autumn. <laughs> late summer. <laughs> That's what my intention was, late summer. Kind of cool, right? Now I'm going to leave the rest. I'm going to go back in here and add a little brown. Okay. So now it's starting to dry a little bit. Um, we can take that liner brush. I'm going to go back in here and add some little lines in here. 
Uh, still kind of bleeding, so I'm going to give it a minute or two. I'm going to let this whole thing... Ooh, dark. Dry. And then see where we go from there. So now we have to let this whole entire baby dry. It will take a while. Of course, by the power of TV, mine will take a lot shorter. But if I was home painting by myself, I would let it dry, walk away, go have some coffee, whatever, and then come back and pick it up. Okay, by the power of television, it's dry. So this is where we get a little closer. Um, you can use the burnt sienna color, maybe mix with a little the brown. And we're gonna go and do the little dandelions. So this little trick, see that white center. We're gonna do some little marks, kind of like right here, little lines with the um, this is with the liner brush, kind of wiggling like this, like a little spidery. And then we're gonna remove some of the paint off our brush, kind of go out like this around that circle, right? You might want to dissipate some of it, so I'm going to grab some water and kind of blend it. So that takes a little time. And you can add a little bit darker color to the bottom. And then we're going to, from here, this is the stem. Bring it down. You can make that a little bit darker. But that's our little dandelion. Again, we can go like this. We can also do a little circle here. Let's see, come in closer. Ugh. This is like a burnt sienna, a little bit lighter. Kind of fill in. See, we move the outer circle like there. Fill it in. So you see a lighter circle and then a little bit darker circle. You see this? Slightly darker. Let that dry a little bit. You can add a little dark even to the center right here. We're going to let that dry and we're going to be doing little lines again like we did in the first one. Kind of going out the dandelion. And then you take your brush and you make the stem. Should be a little fuzzy. If not, you can go up to the top of the edges of the little white. That's how I'm doing my dandelion. You don't have you can do another way too. You can just loosely go like this put little dots on the edge Dif different ways to play around with it and of course this is center and we have the stem kind of already going to that and then that perfect dandelions by any means, but it's kind of fun just to play with that. Again, do the little center there. Going to bleed out some color out here on the outer edge. Wait till this dries and start doing the, the little lines going in again. This is still very wet. Or you can do the little lines like I did in the beginning with the center and can kind of blend them and bleed them. So I put the lines in and you can kind of just take some water and kind of mush them around a circle. Many different ways to play with the dandelion. Maybe this one's your favorite. I don't know. There's just different ways to play with it. The simple lines like you see here center going upward and adding look a little dots and 
and of course the stem. See how fun that is? So do that with all your dandelions. Figure out which one you like to do the best. I'm thinking the last one, last couple ones I like the best with the little dots. I try a different variety of different things. These ones have little dots. I put these little dots on these. Little dots on these. Play with it. Right? And so for the le the other things, the wheat, again, you're going to crisscross over a little stem. And you can just kind of make like a little push down with like yellow, beige kind of tones. Like that. And you put your wheat. Right? Go back up in here, put one up here. You can use a liner or you could use a smaller brush if that works better for you. The liner is going to give you real skinny little lines, hence the liner. <laughs> That's why I like it. It's a tiny brush. So you get all these little tiny little leaves that make up the little wheats. The wheats? Wheats? Wheat? Simple little lines going in for the wheat. Isn't that pretty? I think it's kind of a fun tutorial to do. Really great for any skill level. You were just bleeding color, removing color. Again, again, I'm going to go put this stinny line in here. Dash, 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 and then put the stem. Connecting all the fun stuff. Really kind of sweet, right? Love the color choices of the brown with the blue. Simple and magical at the same time. I have this one kind of fading in the background, this little dandelion here. Again, I'll add some deeper color to the center. And then pull that little stem down. And then I can just add little dots on the edge. So I just love to see the things you guys come up with. I'm giving you the tools to play and then show you what to do. And then you go for it. You try it yourself. Put some variety of the little wheat down here. Now, play with, you know, you have wheat and you have the um, dandelion. Play with some leaves too. Don't be afraid. So I have the eight long round brush. Got some browns playing here. You can just take the brush. Make some cool looking leaves. Kind of bending and twisting and all that good stuff. Play with your paints. It's the only way you're going to learn. Even darker ones down there, see? grays, blues, even yellows, beiges and browns, all that good stuff. Play with the leaves. Isn't that fun? <laughs> I hope so. That's all the name of the game. Yellow. So you can use the eight long round. You can create a little thicker wheat. That was skinny. And it gets a little thicker pushing down. Just doing some little strokes right here. Those little wheat. Depends on what you want to do. Right? A little bit thicker. Lots of fun when you play with this technique on wet and wet. It's really fun. So I hope this was fun for you. It certainly was fun for me creating this and then, you know, my crazy brain, how it works with how I'm just painting and removing and going back and painting. Try doing some crazy stuff like this. And if you didn't want to do dandelions and wheat, play with this technique for other things. Maybe some florals, whatnot. I'm adding some more stems in here, kind of just in this general area to make it darker. You want your composition to be interesting. So there you go. I hope this was fun, exciting, 
and you learn something. I love this technique, the wet on wet, super wet on wet. It stays wet long. It adheres to that background palette that you have for a long time. So when it dries completely, it's gonna dry flat. So, cause even though you're saturating it with a lot of water. And when this is it's still damp, you can go back in and just do your little cute little dandelions. And if you didn't want to do dandelions, like I said, do flowers, whatnot. Play with your watercolor. So much fun. Thank you for stopping by my channel. Have a great time playing. Take care and I'll speak to you soon.